Since the dawn of time, math has been in our society, and math will continue to be a crucial part of our lives. I love the quote by Paul Holmes that says, The only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. This echoes the importance of having students actually go through the problem-solving process of doing mathematics. It is the conceptual knowledge the students need, not just procedural fluency. Throughout my field experience, and particularly in math, I have tried my best to combine the best aspects of both constructivism and the social linguistic theory. I have found that children need the proximal zone of development that Vygotsky focuses on, along with the socially talking about math, but they also need the constructivist freedom to discover concepts on their own. A great example of this comes from my field experience at Johnston. During my lesson on measuring angles with a protractor, I gave the students a problem to figure out on knowing which set of numbers to use on their protractor. I then gave them two minutes to talk to their neighbor about a solution to the problem. This gave them the constructivist aspect to figure out the concept for themselves, but also gave them the ability to process their thinking with others in a social setting. The students were able to construct their own schema about the concept. I also found that having students think reflectively and critically about the problems they were solving was extremely helpful for both the students and I. A good example of this is in my lesson on measuring centimeters. I had the students explain how they solved their problems. This helped me and them to realize if they really understood how and why to solve the problem. This helped me in knowing if I needed to reteach. It also encouraged the constructivist ideals of crit critical and reflective thought. This helped in their so problem solving, reasoning and proof, connections, and communications. It also... I have grown a lot during my field experience time. When I first began teaching math to my students at Johnston, I really had very little idea how I was going to teach math to real students. For example, one of my first lessons about triangles, I kept to a mostly lecture-based format during my direct instruction. This obviously wasn't the most engaging lesson for me or my students. One of my last lessons on converting measurements had far more student engagement in the direct instruction. I had the students answering questions, solving problems, and talking through concepts with their peers. This was far more engaging for the student, but it also helps in their reasoning and proof communications, and problem solving. I also grew in the activities I had the students do. In the beginning, my guided practice time was very bland and often did not allow for much collaboration, as in my triangles lesson, where I just had them make different triangles that I told them to do and help them through their thinking. However, one of my last lessons on converting weight and mass, I used a guided practice activity that was real-world relevant and allowed them to collaborate with others. One specific activity that my students and I really enjoyed was where I printed out a supermarket sales ad in the metric and customary and had them convert the weight and mass of different items. This gave them a chance to see real-world importance of what I was teaching. It was also a more student-directed problem that allowed them to pick which problems they wanted to convert. This gave multiple entry and exit points and allowed for differentiation among the students. This, I had a variety of learners in my group. I had some students who were far more ahead and students who were much further behind. I learned a lot about what kind of activities my students responded better to. I found it was important to have a fast finisher activities as some of my students could finish our independent practice in 5 to 10 minutes, while others would never even get further than a couple of problems. Having fast finisher activities gave me time to focus on and scaffold my students who were struggling. Differentiation is a staple in today's classroom. It is something that I will be encountering in my future, and it is something that I will be including. My job when thinking about the lesson objective was in really thinking about all the skills that made up up to them being able to carry out the lesson objective. One specific lesson I remember was when I first began converting units of measurement. The students could understand the concept, but they did not have a firm grasp on division. They understood the concept and the objective, but they could not get the right answer because they had not been properly taught division. We had to change our thinking in having them just set up the problem to decide whether to multiply divide versus actually solving the actual math, as division was not the objective we were teaching. This flexibility to change and adapt is something that will be crucial when I am an actual teacher. Assessment in the classroom serves a variety of purposes, from letting me see how my students are doing to informing what and how I teach. I would assess more informally during their guided practice. I also use worksheets to show the students the abstract side of concepts they had learned concretely and representationally during our direct instruction and guided practice. This also allowed me and them to see what problems would look like on the test and be prepared for what was to come. I found one of the... One of my students really struggled to write down what he or she was doing, but could easily tell me. This was one way I was able to differentiate her assessment and allow her to prove what she knew. While worksheets were the, not the only way I assessed my students, I did find them helpful in assessing their ability to solve problems in the abstract. I would only move to this, though, once I was sure they could solve concretely and representationally. This is something I would like to use in my future classroom. The most important thing that I've learned to apply to my future practice is that of knowing my students. Knowing how my students think is crucially important to me being able to teach in a way they learn. It is also important as I know what engages my students and what type of activities they will enjoy most because those are the lessons that will help my students accomplish their objective and succeed as mathematicians. I also discovered that flexibility is key. I found that interweaving the social linguistic and constructivist approach in my classroom is something that I want to do. 
When students are able to discover their schema together with their peers, they are being set up for success. I hope to be a math teacher who makes math fun and exciting while giving my students academic skills and knowledge they need to be successful. I hope to apply all that I have learned during my field experience at Johnston to my future classroom.